a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The people were filled with expectation and all were asking in their hearts whether John might be the Christ. He answered them all saying, I am baptizing you with water, but one mightier than I is coming. I am not worthy to loosen the thongs of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. After all the people had been baptized and Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice from heaven came, you are my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today is the feast of the baptism of the Lord. I hope you get a chance to see the video on television of Pope Francis this morning baptizing 28 babies in the Sistine Chapel. Baptism is my favorite sacrament bar none. I honestly feel it's a privilege to baptize. Here you have this new life, and you look down at this beautiful baby who is nothing but loved. Those eyes are wide awake, looking at wondering what's going on in this world. And you wonder what their world will be like when they're my age. And then you have parents who are beaming with joy and pride. You have grandparents who are jumping out of their skin. And today, baptism has become a familial celebration. In the past, it used to be just the parents and godparents who came to church. Watch the next time we have a baptism, how many family and friends are present. There might be 10, 20, 30 people. If it's an Italian family, there's 50 of them here. <laughs> but it becomes a great familial celebration. And any parent who brings a child into the world today should be commended and admired. And any parent who is willing to bring a child to the baptismal font should be even further commended and admired because it's a great risk trying to transmit this faith to the next generation. The ritual says to them, you are the first teachers of your child in the ways of faith. May you be also the best of teacher, bearing witness to the faith, not so much by what you say, but by what you do. And I suspect that there are some parents sitting here this morning saying to themselves, I hate to tell you, Father, but we did all that, and it didn't work. None of our kids are going to church today. I would ask you to be patient and have faith. Remember that God's ways are not our ways, and God is not yet finished with our children. I baptized a little boy two or three years ago. He was a bit older, maybe a year old, and I started the baptismal rite, and all of a sudden he reached over and he grabbed hold of my finger. And this kid could hang on for dear life. And the more I tried to get my finger away from him, the more he just looked up and giggled. And I had to turn the pages, I had to anoint him with oil, and I couldn't get him loose from my finger. And finally the father reached down and literally pried each of his fingers off of my finger. That's exactly what happens with God and you and me in baptism. God holds on to us and he won't let go. We might forget him, we might abandon him, we might even betray him, but he will not let go of us. Read the scriptures. Israel did everything it could to get away from God, and yet God hung on to them. I'm telling you, God will never let go of you or me or our children. Amen.